Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about arterial disease in vascular surgery. So the main two types are occlusive and aneurysmal, and the most common cause of both of these is due to atherosclerosis. It causes occlusion, obviously because of the plaque buildup and thrombosis on top of that, and in aneurysmal it's due to the degenerative effects that atherosclerosis brings along with it. So before we get started, why should we treat peripheral vascular disease, which we're going to be talking about today. This is because it brings with it a significant increase in morbidity and mortality. So today we're going to be focusing on the occlusive type of arterial disease. So starting off with chronic, the main etiological factors, as, as with many other diseases in medicine, are smoking, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and diabetes. So many of the patients can be asymptomatic, but one symptom that they first start to complain about is called intermittent claudication. And the most three important things about intermittent claudication are muscular pain on exercise. This pain gets worse with an increased amount of exercise or increased exercise intensity, and the pain is relieved by rest. Now, the most common places that people complain about this pain, this intermittent claudication, are the cough and the buttock most commonly. The diagnosis of intermittent claudication is mainly a clinical one, however, a post-exercise fall in ABPI, which is ankle brachial pressure index, can be diagnostic. So it's important to treat intermittent claudication because, as I said before, this significantly increases morbidity and mortality of patients. But also, because the patient has peripheral vascular disease, that means they're also at risk of getting a vascular disease in their coronary or cerebral arteries, which puts them at risk of things like stroke and myocardial infarction. So with treatment, as always, we start off with things like stopping smoking and decreasing cholesterol and losing weight and decreasing blood pressure and controlling diabetes, things like that. But of course, we are studying surgery, so there are the more invasive options as well. So firstly, we have the endovascular treatment, which is not considered invasive, not open surgery, and this involves angioplasty plus or minus stent. So angioplasty is basically when they go inside the vessel and blow up a balloon to increase the diameter of the vessel, and according to whether this works or not, then they can decide whether they need a stent or not. Endovascular treatment works better higher up, so if we're taking into consideration the aortoiliac segment versus the popliteal artery, it has better results in the aortoiliac segment. The second option, which is of course not ideal, but in cases where people are getting claudication by walking short distances, and if this is causing severe impact on their lifestyle, then surgery can be done, of course, and this is bypass depending on where the disease is. So an example would be a femoral popliteal bypass, for instance. So as I mentioned, intermittent claudication is the mildest form of peripheral vascular disease. But if the disease is allowed to progress, then one can later on get critical ischemia. And this is described as rest pain, ulceration or gangrene with absent pedal pulses or can be diagnosed by an ABPI of less than 0.5. So what I wrote in pink, if you're taking a history of a patient and they tell you that they sleep with their leg hanging out of the bed because when they go to sleep at night, their pain gets worse, then alarm bells should start ringing here. They do this because of gravity to get blood flowing to their legs because at night the pain typically gets worse, the claudication gets worse. So by sleeping with their leg hanging off the bed, their symptoms get better. So alarm bells should start ringing when you hear a patient say this. So again, with critical ischemia, the treatment is mainly like with intermittent claudication, of course, surgery being more likely with critical ischemia just because the disease is much worse, and amputations are also a treatment option in critical ischemia. So moving on to acute limb ischemia, this is described as a sudden decrease in limb perfusion that threatens the viability of the limb. So unlike in chronic limb ischemia, where patients could have presented to a normal doctor's appointment, this time patients will present to emergency most of the time. 
So the etiology is mainly due to two reasons. 60% of the time it's due to acute thrombosis in an already atherosclerotic vessel. So there'll be a plaque already in the vessel, a thrombus forms on that and causes acute occlusion of the vessel. And 30% of the time it's due to emboli. This could be coming from the heart, such as in aortic fibrillation, or it could come from aneurysms or other vessels that are atherosclerotic, for instance. The signs and symptoms of acute limb ischemia are easy to remember. They're the six Ps, so pain, pallor, pulselessness, paralysis, paresthesia, and perishing cold. So treatment, because this is an acute presentation, we always, always have to start with ABCD. So make sure that the patient is breathing, give them oxygen, get IV access, take bloods. Pain relief, extremely important, of course. And once the patient is stable, there are two treatment options, mainly according to what the etiology of the limb ischemia is. So if there's an embolus, this is a clinical diagnosis and the embolus can be removed by embolectomy. And if this is a thrombus, an, if this is a thrombus, an angiogram is normally done to gain more information about the cause of the, treat, of the thrombus. And then there are a few treatment options. So thrombectomy, bypass graft and thrombolysis. If the ischemia isn't as severe and the limb will survive for at least 12 hours. In some cases, of course, the ischemia is reversible and an amputation will be required. So I hope you find this video helpful. Of course, this isn't detailed at all. There is a lot more information to remember, but I just wanted to create a bit of a summary, both for myself and for other students who are finding the information a little bit overwhelming. Of course, I suggest reading through books beforehand to gain a, a good knowledge about the subject but this is just something both to get you started and also maybe to go through the night before the exam so i hope you guys have a great day or had a great day if you're looking at this in the evening and i wish you all the best